recording. Okay, did that work? Yes. All right, we're recording. Okay, everybody, so let's get started. Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad to see you all and uh, excited to start this weekly yoga. Again, if you have, are new to yoga, I want you to modify. I won't just stay with the beginner level, but I also will tell you how to go more advanced as we go along and what to do. Um, again, if you get tired, I just want you to rest. I'm going to show you a pose to stay in. If we get to where you want to take a break, just rest in this pose. And that's the pose we're going to start in. If you've got your mat and your water, you're ready to go. So everybody get on your mat, facing the front of your mat, and put your hands on the floor right under your shoulders, and just sit back. And as you sit back, this is child pose. I want you to stretch your arms over your head. Sarah, I'm having a hard time hearing you. You are? Okay, let's see what I can do here. It might be a combination of 65-year-old ears and my 10-year-old computer. Oh, it could be that. All right, how about now? Is that better? I don't think it's any different. All right, so I feel like I'm okay with the recording, so let's just hope for the best. I'll speak up, okay? I turned the music down, so maybe that's it. Can you hear me, Karen? Yes. Okay, let's sit back again. So watch if you can hear, you'll definitely be able to get a lot and I'm gonna demo everything too. Just sit back onto your knees, into your hips and take your head all the way down. You can use your hands for leverage and just get a back stretch. So you wanna think about your tailbone going all the way to the floor. Maybe you may not be able to get all the way down if your knees are really tight, don't push it. Use your hands for leverage. And then we're going to talk about how the breath plays a big part in yoga. So I want you to take a nice deep inhale and exhale. And every time you exhale, you can try to tip that tailbone down to the floor a little bit more, just getting that long back stretch. Again, this is child pose. At any given time, if you get tired or you feel like you need a break, just come in child's pose. The modification you can do if this hurts is cross your arms and your elbows and just rest right here and only go as deep as you want. So let's take another breath, inhale, and exhale. Now this is your practice. So I really want you to get lost in your own practice, feeling your breath, because you're at home with Zoom and you're in your own privacy. Just enjoy stretching. You can do this any time of the day. And one more breath, exhale. Now just slowly, we're gonna Connect that breath. Part of the yoga practice is connecting your breath to your pose. So we're going to come up onto the hands and knees now. And we're going to do this a very similar thing that we just did. You're just going to take your left hand and weave it under your right underarm and get a stretch. And then just lean into that left arm and breathe. <laughs> so you're going to feel a gentle stretch. You're on your knees now. You're not pushing your buttocks down, but more up towards the ceiling. Just an easy little stretch. But you're adding your twist. And come back up. And inhale first and exhale and twist to the other side. So you may not get your shoulder all the way through. You can just barely touch your arm on, but relax into that shoulder. You're feeling a little twist from that right shoulder all the way around. And come back up. All right. So in yoga, as well as any fitness program, alignment is really important. So make sure your hands are directly under your shoulders. You don't want them reaching out here. Same with your knees under your hips. This creates a firm foundation for you to sit, and so you won't um, be hurting yourself, but also for balance. All right, so spread your fingers wide, and then drop your belly down. And feel the tailbone go up. This is called cow pose. If you think about how cow has udders and hangs down, this is easy to find. The belly going down, the tail going up. And just slightly pull your shoulders back. Really stretch that lower back. Again, go as deep as you can go. Everyone has their own edge. Don't go any deeper than you know. And now go the opposite direction. So you're going to lift the center of your back up, tuck your chin, and push your hands away from the floor. Tuck your chin. And then again, go all the way down through cow. The second pose is called cat. So think about how cat screeches its back up. Tuck your chin. And one more time. Inhale. Let's add the breath. And exhale. 
exhale as you go to cat. So let's do one more round so we can connect the breath. Really stretch as deep as you can. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. And then come back in the center. We call this a neutral spine. So you went to the extremes. Now you're going to be able to find that center. As you do, I want you to find your belly button and pull it toward your spine and feel that nice strength of the core. And then I just want you to take your right leg and extend it back on the ball of the foot, stretch it out. Feel that nice stretch in the hamstring as you take your heel towards the back. And then lift your leg off. Now you've got both hands on the floor. You can keep them here as you balance. Or if you want to go a little more difficult, take the left arm over your head and find your balance. Now breathe normally. Pull your core in. Inhale. Exhale. Try to keep that core center. Inhale. Exhale. Bring it down. All right. Let's try the other one. You don't want to try to lift the hip up high. You want to try to keep it in line with the other hip. So stretch that left leg out. Push the heel back. Feel the hamstring working. Feel that knee engage. And then lift it off the floor. So obviously you're going to put more of your weight in your left hand if you take your right hand off. Drop that left hip down just a little bit. And reach that right arm high. Now pull your core in. Feel the left heel kind of reaching towards the ceiling. Relax your shoulder on your right arm and push through on that left hand. And bring everything down. All right, good job. All right, just shake your hips side to side. We're going to make some circles. So I want you to bring your weight into your hands. Go to the right. Take your weight to the back. Take your weight to the left. And take your weight to the front. And now reverse. Take your weight to the left. Take your weight to the back. Take your weight to the right and to the front. All right, so you kind of heat it up your back and your core. Let's drop your belly button down one more time for a cow and for a cat. And then come back to your neutral spine. I want you to tuck your toes under. And I want you to lift up. And this is called downward facing dog. As you lift your hips up, I want you to send them back. And I want you to keep your feet at least two fist width apart. If you need to soften your knees, soften them. If you can press your heels back and straighten your legs, straighten them. Take your head right between your shoulders and just look at your feet. In yoga, we call this dristi. It's where you stare, your vision. So take your dristi to your shins or your feet. And then straighten those arms. You can feel this, pushing those hips. Lift the hips high and push back. And then drop back down to your knees. Okay, we're gonna try that again. So downward facing dog. It's an empowerment pose. It's a wonderful pose. This is also a resting pose. If say you are advanced and you wanna just take a break, stay in downward dog. Let's try it again. Lift up, send the hips back. Now this time, as you send the hips back, pull your core in, engage the muscles above your knees, tighten them up, keep sending your hips back, feel long and strong in those arms, and this time bend your knees and start to walk towards your hands. Now the minute you get towards your hands, if you need to bend your knees, go ahead and bend them, okay? Now here's what we're gonna do from here. Get down in your squat, bend your knees, let your hands go off the floor and roll up to standing. And as you roll up, you're just kind of coming up through the spine. Standing up straight. So let's bring our feet together. I'm going to face you now. Take your arms up and over your head. So as you stand with your arms up and over your head, I want you to find that same breath we did when we were on the floor. So this is a diaphragmic breath, which doesn't mean anything but you deep, you're breathing deeper, because obviously we use our diaphragm every time we breathe when we're alive. So when they say diaphragmic breath, that just means a full breath. So inhale, breathe through the nose, and exhale through the mouth. Now, this time we're going to inhale through the nose and breathe, exhale through the nose as well. Arms are up, standing tall, feet together. One more time. Good. If you have a cold, you can always breathe outside of your mouth. Cross your fingers and just point your, your first finger. Arms over your head. Just take a stretch to the side. 
Now, as you're standing tall with those feet, I just want you to let your body kind of fall to the right. The left hip goes to the left, the hands go to the right, and then come back up. There's your inhale, and let's exhale to the left. And this time we're gonna come back up, you're gonna look at your hands, and you're just gonna do a baby, baby back bend, just follow your twisty to your hands. Your hips are coming forward, you're getting this tiny little back bend, but opening, and then come back up. And then you're going to go all the way to the floor. And as you do, bend your knees if you need to. Forward fold. Now, if you can keep your legs straight on forward fold, good. If you need a block, if you have any blocks at home or anything that can elevate you up a little bit, the block is very helpful. And if you have one, great. Use it next time. If not, just use your fingertips. Oh, you can even put your hands on your knees or your thighs. So don't feel like just because... You are, can't reach the floor, you can't do this. So with the straight legs, you can put your hands on your thighs. Hold your strap. Now let's halfway up, everybody. Flatten that back, pull the core in, and then soften the knees you go into a deep forward fold. If you're going into a forward fold, I want you to hang like a rag doll. Feel that back and stretch. The more you bend your knees, the more you're going to stretch that back. Let that tailbone go towards the floor. And then come all the way up, bending your knees, and stand tall. Walk up to the top of your mat. Take a nice deep inhale. And exhale, come back down. Now this time, with your hands on the floor, I want you to step back into lunge pose. Now lunge pose keeps the heel off the floor. So you've got your hands, you can use your blocks as well. And I want you to drop your right knee down. As you drop your right knee down, flatten your foot and bring your hand up to the left knee. So you're basically on the knee, the left knee is bent. Again, alignment is important. Make sure that left knee is over the left ankle, not beyond. And take your arms up over your head. And here's what we're gonna do. Take a deep breath, relax the shoulders. Exhale and lunge into that left. As we do, we're gonna look at the ceiling and open up our chest and take those arms back. Find your breath. And exhale, one more. Inhale, go only as deep as you can. Exhale, find your edge. And then bring your hands right to the heart. Now all I want you to do is take your right elbow and touch your left knee. And as you do, look over your left shoulder. And you can take this a little deeper by curling that right toe under and lifting that right knee off the floor. This is the beginner level that I'm at. If you want to go a little deeper, you can lift that leg off the floor and stretch through that heel. I'm going to stay at the beginner level for the first class so that everybody can do it. And then take the right hand to the floor. Keep that left leg exactly where it is. And just lift that left arm high. And as you do feel that stretch, can you pull your core in a little bit? Right when we were getting, I told you, belly button towards the spine. So the deeper you pull your core in, the deeper you can get your twist. And then bring it down. Now with your balance, I want you to kick into your right foot to your left and step back. Bend your knees. And then come back to standing. All right, give yourself a break. Straighten your spine. Hold it up nice and tall. Relax your shoulders. And breathe. One more breath. Inhale, pull your arms towards the ceiling. Exhale down. All right, one more time. Let's do the other side. Step that left. Remember to keep that breath nice and steady. We try to 
Have symmetry with the breath, equaling the inhale and the exhale. And then bring that right knee down. And this time, instead of stepping through, we're going to bring that right knee to the left and sit back in your child's pose to that. I want you to do two breaths here. Inhale, feel that breath in your back. And exhale. Again, feel that breath in your back. Inhale. And exhale. And come back up. This time, you're going to step your right leg through, just like you did before, and bring your body up to C. I want you to see if you can stretch that right leg out and you're balancing on your left knee. Bring your arms up over your head, nice and slow. Inhale, take your hands to the floor or to the knee and stretch. So your left, right foot is flat, your left knee is holding your weight stable with the line with your hip, and you're just in a nice long hand, hamstring stretch here. Go ahead and come as low as you can. Again, everybody's different. And then come back up. And this time, roll your right foot to the floor and lunge again. And this time, as you lunge, tuck that toe under and get into a runner's lunge with that left knee off the floor. Hold your fingertips to the floor. Put your left hand inside that right foot and reach your right arm high. Find your breath. Inhale. Now we've got that left knee off the floor for a little while, getting that added stretch. And bring it down. Drop the left knee, change legs. All right, so now the left leg comes forward. And bring your hands to the waist and see if you can straighten that left leg. Find your balance and flex your foot. So thinking about how we balance, we have to pull our core center in. That is the key to balance, keeping your hips nice and straight. Arms go up. One side, by the way, might be easier than the other. That's okay. And forward fold, find the floor, let the floor guide you. Stretch that hamstring, flex that foot. Breathe, inhale, take it slower and a little deeper. Exhale. Inhale one more time. Exhale, take it a little deeper. And bend that left knee. Hands come to the floor right by the left foot. And then lift that right knee off the floor. You're in runner's pose. I come up on the pads with my fingers. You can do whatever you want. Hold your knee if you want to. And then right hand comes to the floor, left arm lifts up. Lobby lunge. Find that breath. Inhale. And hand come down. This time we're going to giant step that right foot again. Bring it to the left. Bend your knees. Bend your knees. Very important. Come all the way up to standing. And bring your hands to your center. As we stand tall, bring your feet together and stack your hips over your feet, your shoulders over your hips. Hands in namaste. And just find your breath. Inhale. Exhale. Bring your arms up and over your head. And take your hands behind your head. So the minute you do that, you're going to stretch your shoulders. All we do now is on the computer and lean over, keeping that chest open. It's a really good stretch. And this is one of them that we can do that really helps open up our chest without too much effort. One more breath. Inhale. And arms go back up. And come to Namaste. Now open your feet out a little bit. And bring your hands out to the front, palms facing down in line with your shoulders. And I just want you to see if you can roll up on your tippy toes and find your balance. So it's really important to pull that core in. You might wiggle a little bit, that's perfectly okay. That's just your body adjusting to a new stance. It's trying to find its center. And roll back down. One more time. Inhale, if you want to take your arms up for advanced. Hold on to it, keep them down if you want, or you can keep them close to the body in namaste. Usually when your limbs stay closer to your body, you have a better chance of balancing and once you start taking them all over, the body starts to shake. So it's better just to keep them right here as you're going up onto the ball of the foot. 
and then bring it down. All right, shake that leg out. Take your arms up and over your head one more time. And this time I just want you to lift your right leg. As you lift your right leg, see if you can find your balance and bring your hands to heart center. Now can you wrap that right leg around the left and touch your big toe on the floor? And all of a sudden you're squatting. So this has a squat in it. I want you to squeeze the inner thighs. Now if you want to go a little more advanced, you can wrap that right leg all the way around the back left right calf. But just for now, kickstand it. Take your arms out to the side. You're going to feel that in your hip and wrap the right arm around the left for eagle pose. Eagle pose is, is a pretzel kind of pose. You're wrapping your legs around and your arms around and you're just seeing straight ahead. So as you do, try not to drop your arms down. It's a little bit easier. Lift your elbows up. Stand up nice and tall, pull your core in. Keep your drifty strong. And then release everything. Stand tall. And exhale, forward fold down. I want you to step back down to your knees. And if you can, tuck your toes under. I want you to lift up. This is called plank pose. We won't stay here too long unless you're used to doing this. Press your heels back, pull your core in, and drop your knees down. Let's try it again. Lift up. If you can hold that plank, go ahead. For four, three, two, one. Drop it down. Make sure your hands are under your shoulders. One more time. Lift it up. Push those heels back so your legs are strong and straight. Taking those heels back to the back. And then this time, I just want you to lift your hips up and go into downward dog. You can feel that in your shoulders because you were holding your weight in your shoulders, and now you're still using your arms to hold your weight up. I want you to lift your right leg in the air. This is downward dog split. So you're on one leg. Lift that right leg as high as you can. And then giant step it through. For beginners, stay on that knee. If you're not a beginner, go ahead and go up to lunge. Take your arms up. So beginners, stay on the knee. And for advanced, you can go ahead and take that left knee off. Let's do another back bend. This is our lunge crescent pose. And bring your hands to namaste. Let's twist again. Going to the right, touch that left elbow. I'm modifying for the beginner and for an advanced, keep that left leg off. Find your breath, inhale, exhale. Inhale, take that left hand to the floor, lift that right arm up. If you are even a beginner, you might be able to lift that left knee off. All right, bring your hands down, bring your left knee down. Now turn your right foot out at a 45 degree angle. For those that do that running and walking, you're going to feel it now. If you need a block, you can always. Put your hands on a block. This is lizard pose. You're going to open that hip flexor. So just stretch that hip flexor. Make sure you've got that left knee on to protect. And you're going to feel that stretch in your hip. Just kind of wiggle it around to warm it up. And this is where you're going to stay for a few breaths. If you are used to doing this and feel that your hip flexor is kind of stretched out, you're going to go a little deeper, go on down to your elbow. Make sure you don't roll over on the pinky toe, but you stay on the big toe. And your breath. And bring it back up. And bring your right knee back. All right, let's do a few more planks and then to down dog. So hands underneath, lift up, stretch your legs back, hold on to it for four, three, two, and one. Remember, this is strength and stretch. We're combining the power of our muscles and strength to our stretching. One more time. Lift up. Four. Three. Push those hips back. Push those heels back. Two. One. And relax. Give your arms a break. The last time, you lift up and go right into down dog. So send those hips back like we did. The form of down dog again. Two fist width between the feet. Make sure the head goes through the shoulders and arms and looking at the feet or the shins. And then lift that left leg high. Now you can lift it as high as you want. We're trying to keep the knee down or foot down. Try not to open up your hip for this. Just lifting that leg. It doesn't matter how high. Keep in the form. And then giant step it through. 
Take your time. If you have to take a few giant steps, that's okay. And then turn that left foot out. And as you turn that left foot out, stretch it. Again, I wish you kind of using your hands or your block, just, or in a book, you can use a book too. Just kind of relax into that right hip. This is stretching that hip flexor. So by leaning forward into that hip, you're getting that stretch. Take a few breaths here. Maybe go around a little bit. If you're not, if you're not overdoing it, if you're doing it easy, because you've got that right knee on the floor. And then if you want to take it all the way down to the elbow, that gives you a deeper stretch in that hip flexor. You don't have to. Find your breath. And come back up. And this time, step back. Curl your toes under. And oh, you know what I forgot to do? Bring that left foot up. Ah, sorry, I forgot to do the twist. So as you come back up, let's lift that left arm again. And bring it down. Curl your toes under. And step back to downward facing up. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Start to walk forward. And then take your fingertips on the floor and lift halfway up. So lifting halfway up, you can be on your thighs like this left. Lifting halfway up, what you're trying to do is keep that back flat. Or you can be on the fingertips, lifting up, and you're pulling that core in, trying to flatten that back. Exhale, forward fold. Soften the knees if you need to. Sometimes if you soften your knees, you can get in a deep forward fold, and then you can try to straighten your knees from there. Bringing your head as close as you can. Every day is going to be different. Some days it's going to go closer than others, and that's perfectly okay. Lean slightly into the balls of the feet, and then bend your knees and stand all the way up, rolling up to standing and coming back to namaste. Shake it out a little bit. We're going to do the other side, which is eagle on the other side. Is everybody feeling okay? All right, here we go. Feet together, arms go up and over the head. Now I do this for balance because if you think about how a tight a tight rope works, having use your arms for balance. If you keep your arms up, sometimes it helps with your balance when you lift your leg. So see if that works for you, and then bring that hand to the heart, or you can keep them up. I do both, and then cross that left leg over for the other side of the eagle pose. Now eagle pose, you want your hips forward. You want your leg just crossed over. If it seems tight, just touch your big toe. And then this time, the left arm goes under the right. Here's the pretzel for this. And just kind of squat into the pose. Squeeze those knees together and lift the elbows in line with the shoulders. Tristy, your vision is right straight ahead. So it's called like in, in dance, we call this a spot. In yoga, we call it dristi, and that's where you just stare to find your balance. And again, if you are advanced and can wrap that left leg around, go ahead and do it a little bit harder, but not, I don't always do it. It depends on my balance this whatever day it is. As long as you're squatting, you're working those legs, and then come on out. And one more time, easy, take it down. Find that stretch. And let's just step back, both legs into plank one more time. Here's your stretch again. Hold on to it. And this time, instead of dropping to the knees, we're going to drop the whole body down to the floor. Bend your elbows and just go down to the floor. And let it out. Keep your hands right where they are. And all I want you to do is push into your hands and send your shoulders and your head off the floor and back. And kind of relax your shoulders as you lift. You've got your hands on the floor. This is called baby cobra. Your feet are on the floor. And your dristy is straight ahead. Think about how you can keep your neck straight with your spine. And that's where your head's going to be. You don't want to crank it up. And you don't want to drop it down. You just want to keep it in line with your spine. And then bring it down. So this is helping our back. Remember, opening up all those things. The, the, the opposite direction of leaning over over a computer. This is a great thing to do. All right, one more time. Lift up. If you have it in your practice to go a little bit higher, maybe you can come up a little bit more on your hands. Keep your 
freeze on the floor it up into high cobra. You don't have to. You can stay low. And come back down. Keep your feet flat on the floor though. Push into those feet as you lift up. One more time. Inhale. If you're a beginner and you're in low cobra, you're going to push into your hands and come back this way. If you are in your high position with high cobra, you're going to do the same, tuck your toes in, and then everybody's going to go downward facing dog. And breathe it out. And inhale. Exhale. So we're going to go kind of slow. We're not doing a high impact, you know, flow that's going to exert our energy. We're keeping focused on our breath, stretching and strengthening. All right, everybody step through right hand, a uh, right foot to the hands and come up to your knee. So even those that were on their knee before, let's give it a try. Come up, take your hands over your head into your simple lunge, keeping that left heel off the floor and just twist to the right. So your body's going forward with the knees and your arms are twisting to the right. And come back up and step forward. And let's change legs. Step the right leg back. Use your core facing front. Get deep into your lunge. Remember your left knee should never go over your left foot. Keep it right in line. And see if you can keep that right leg straight. If you can and you're dipping that right knee, it's okay. So the hamstring might be too tight. You can always drop back down. So if you do want to drop back down, you can do the same and then open those arms out. So imagine your fingertips reaching in opposite directions. The head goes with the twist. And come back to center and step forward. So if you're on the floor, just step forward. Come on up to standing and relax your arms. Roll your shoulders back. Clasp your hands behind your back and just rest them right at the buttocks. And then take them away from the buttocks, stretching as far away as you can, and bring it down. Again, inhale, stretch, squeeze those shoulder blades together, and relax. Standing tall, one more time. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, squeeze, and relax. Bring your arms back and over your head. Now I want you to step that left foot back, but this time I want you to put the heel on the floor. And if you look down at your feet, your right foot and your toes are facing forward. Your left foot is at like a 10 minutes to the clock. So it's at a 45 degree angle. Put your hands on your hips and then bend that right knee and walk that right knee out a little bit. Because again, you always want your knee over your ankle and take your arm up. This is called Warrior One. This is the first of our Warrior series. We're going to learn them slowly, but we're not going to do them with the flow until we learn them. So just see how this feels. It should feel a little awkward in that left hip because you're really trying to push that left heel down as you're trying to bend. And breathe. Relax your shoulders. And then stand up. Take your arms back down. Sweep your arms up and over again. Let's just do one forward fold all the way down. Let's lift halfway up. Flatten that back. And forward fold again. Again, if your forward fold feels tight, soften your knees or open your legs a little bit between so you have more space. And then roll up like a rag doll. Bring your feet together again. Take your arms up and over and step that right leg back. Again, look at your form. Your right foot is at a 45 degree angle. The left foot is forward and fold. And your legs are straight. And as you bend into that left leg, creep that left foot forward so you can get even with both feet. This is about a half to three-quarter stance between your heels, depending on your flexibility and practice. Relax your shoulders. Let's see if we can take our twisty up to that left uh, to the hands and just do a little baby back bend this time. Breathe deep. Inhale. Exhale. One more, inhale and exhale. Step that right foot forward, feet together. Again, forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway up and exhale, forward fold. All right, 
hands on the mat, step back to your plank. Hold your strength. Lower down to the floor. Inhale, lift up baby cobra or high cobra. Stretch that back. Curl your toes under, lift your hips high, downward facing dog. Lift that right leg high again. And this time, I want you to giant step the right foot through, come down to the knee. We've done this before. I want you to walk your right foot over to your left hand and drop that knee down. And here is the stretch for the runners. This is called pigeon pose. So as you drop that right knee down, turn that hip out. Keep your hands on the floor. Go ahead and walk the left foot back a little bit. And using your fingertips, just stretch into that right hip. This is a huge open hip flexor. So that right hip is getting a deep stretch in that right hip. And if you want to go ahead and come down to the elbows and just fold into pigeon pose. Flex that right foot, though, if you can. When you flex your right foot, it protects the right knee. And then you want to scoop that left foot back as deep as you can to get that stretch. If you want to go a little more advanced and you're used to doing pigeon, you can leave your left arm under your right and lay your head on the floor. If you're not ready for that, I want you to stay on your hands or your elbows. Take a few deep breaths. Inhale. This is that hurt so good pose. It feels good, but it also kind of hurts because if you're tight, you'll feel it. Don't go too deep. Stay right where you are. You can always also put a blanket under your right hip. So next time, maybe bring a blanket. And you can just sit on that blanket and you still get the stretch without full of the stretch. So I always tell people who are brand new to yoga, bring a blanket just in case you need it. And then let's go back. Relax, come on out of it slowly, slowly, slowly. Throw your toes under, lift up to downward facing dog. And you can see how when you're forward fold or anything and you go back to forward fold, it's a counter stretch. And that's the symmetry of yoga we want as well. The counter stretch. So we want to go one direction, then the other. Lift the left leg. Take a deep breath and exhale. Bring that left foot forward, drop to the knee. So we're getting into the Alignment of pigeon. You're going to walk the left foot now to the right hand and then just open up that left knee to the floor. You may bring that right, the left foot in towards the, the pelvis a little, that's okay. Hands on. My left hip is a lot tighter because I used to run and I had a running in, injury, so this is, definitely doesn't go down as deep as the other. So listen to your body. Always use one side of our body more. It seems hard to, especially if you're right handed, you turn the hands to the right more. All right, if you want to go to the elbows, you can. You don't have to. If you want to go deeper and leave that right arm under, you can. Otherwise, just find that stretch. Close your breath. And one more time, curl that toe, bring that leg back. And let's just go into child's pose. <clears throat> so sit back in your child's pose. Open your knees out this time, though, as wide as your mat, and see if you can just sit back into your hips and shake them out. This is also stretching out a little. And breathe. So one of the things you're going to be aware of is you're going to be aware of trying to keep your core in as you practice. And you're going to try to keep your breath moving. Those are two important parts in yoga, even no matter what level you are. Just finding that strength in your center and in your muscles as you keep that breath going, which helps the stretch and the recovery. Because you inhale and exhale. You've got to kind of let go when you do that exhale. All right, come on all the way up. Let's curl the toes one more time. We're down with facing dog, and let's just stretch it out. So this is the last downward dog before we go to the floor. I want you to think about making this your best downward dog. Maybe come up to the tippy toes, stretch out your legs, and shift your hips back on your tippy toes, and then roll the heels down. 
And while you're rolling them down, try to engage those knees and those thighs, keeping those thighs nice and tight. Feel the arms strong, pushing into the hands. And pull your core in. And when you pull your core in, it straightens your spine. I've seen people do downward dog and they've got their back bent like this. You want to pull your core in and keep that back nice and long, protecting the core and the back with the stretch. And then slowly come back again, bend your knees. And let's roll up to standing. Okay, so one more pose standing. And this is a balancing pose. These are all beginner level poses. So even if you're brand new to this, there's something you can try. For this one, if you need to stand by a wall or a chair, you can always grab a chair. You may not need it. But this is called tree pose. So put your hands on your waist. And we're just going to lift up the knee. So you're going to grab your right hand to your right ankle. And you're going to put your foot right inside that upper left thigh. And you're going to find your balance by pushing that right foot in. And then that left foot is pushing into the floor. And then just see if you can bring your hands to namaste. This is very important to find that dristy. You might even just stare at the dot on the computer screen because that's a dristy point. And relax everything else. If it starts to hurt your knee, come out. Do it again. One more breath. This is called tree pose. If you want to go advanced, you can take your arms up and over your head. Anytime, like I said, you move your hands away from the center, it shifts your balance. And come on out. Shake that left leg out since that's the one you were standing on. And let's try the other side. Hand tall. Bring your arms up and over your head. And into namaste. Shift your weight to your right foot and lift the left foot off. Hold on to it first. I always advise find your center, pull your core in here before you do anything else. Grab that ankle, place that left foot inside the right foot, push it hard, and find your balance. So you're turning that left hip flexor. We already warmed that hip flexor up. So just see what you can do with that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just see if you can do it. If this is too hard, you can also modify and just put your left foot into the lower calf. Or if it gets to where you can't find your balance, go a little wall and you can practice this on your own. One more breath. Inhale, take your arms up if you want. So you can see when I wiggled around too much, I fell out of it. So take your time and bring it all. Okay, shake it out. And then go to the top of your mat, open your feet out, and turn, take your toes out, your heels on the mat, take your arms up and over. And I just want you to squat down and come back up. So basically, these are just squats. Your toes are out, your heels are in. And when you bend your knees, your knees are going over your ankles, keeping your spine straight. Now this time, as you bend your knees, bring your hands to heart center. And lift it up, breathe with it. Inhale as you come down. Actually, exhale as you come down. Inhale as you go up. There's your inhale. See how straight your body is, exhale. Like you're drawing a straight line right down your spine. Keep everything nice and straight. Stretch it up. Inhale. And let it go. Exhale. Relax those shoulders if you come down one more time. Inhale. And exhale. Stay there this time and hold for four. Now here's where you're going to feel the tension. Make sure those feet are under the knees. Protect the knees. Pull your core in. Feel your tailbone dipping down. Open your heart. Open your shoulders. Look straight ahead for four, three, two, and one. Straighten those legs. Turn your feet in, forward fold. As you forward fold, I want you to open your feet out wide. Take your toes off the mat. Squat again. See if you can just squat with your hands on the floor. Toes turned out, heels in. Maybe, maybe you can put your hands in on the stay and squat low. If this is too much on your knees, which it could be, just stay in this position right here and squat it out. And then walk your feet in if it's too much. If you feel like you can just drop down to the mat now with your tailbone on the floor, now we're sitting on the mat. Okay, we're doing a few more poses. So remember, we're stretching and we're strengthening. As we cool down, we only have 15 more minutes. As we cool down, we're going to do a lot more stretching. So we kind of arched. We started off slow, we went to the height, and now we're coming back down. All right.
right, so this is a little core work. So we, we have to build our core in yoga to balance and to keep everything centered. And that's really important. And you're going to find as you build your core and you get your twist in and all that, it's going to be so much easier uh, for your back and for agility. So let's bring your hands onto your knees. There's a lot of modifications in this too. Big toe on the floor. And just kind of lean back into it. You can stay right here because you're engaging that core. So if you want to get detailed with muscles, you're now engaging a muscle called your psoas muscle, which is an abdominal muscle that's way inside your back. So it's on the other side of your spine, and it's one of our four abdominal muscles. So we've got the rectus, transverse, and the obliques, two obliques, and then we've got that psoas muscle. And the psoas muscle we don't use as much, but the minute you lean back, you're engaging that psoas muscle. And can you lift your feet off the floor just for a little while and release your hands? This is Navasana or boat pose, and you're pretty much creating a boat with your body. Inhale. Exhale. And bring it down. Now cross your ankles, sit up nice and tall. Take your arms over your head. Take your right hand to the floor, and I want you to side stretch towards the right. Keep your hips on the floor. I'm going to bring my camera down a little bit lower so you can see me better. There we go. So you cross your ankles and you're over here. So we're going to finish the practice now on the floor. And come back up. All right, bring your knees in again. Tuck that core in on the big toes. Lift up. So you're engaging your core the minute you do this. You're engaging that psoas and... Release the hands for a second. Hold on for four, three, two, one. Cross the ankles again. Sit up as tall as you can. You're on your six bones. Four pulled in. Left hand goes to the floor. Reach the right and side stretch. So when you breathe, I want you to inhale, lift up. Exhale, stretch. Think about how your breath fits in with your movement. And come back. Good job. All right. So again, if you're just keeping your feet on the big toes, that's fine. You can do this just like this, and you're working that core. If you want to go advanced and lift your feet off, you can do it. So hands on the knees, lean back, engage that core, stay on your big toes, or lift your feet off and hold for four. Three, two, one. This time, cross your ankle, sit up tall. Instead of side stretching, we're still going to twist, but we're going to turn. Take your left hand to your right knee, right hand behind you, and twist all the way around. Don't lift that left hip off the floor. And come back. And go to the other side, right hand, and twist. So you don't want to let your weight lean into that. You want to sit up tall and just twist, looking over that left shoulder. Breathe. Pull your core in and still breathe. So if you take that belly button towards the spine, pull that core and still do your normal breathing. You can go deeper in this pose. And come back. And roll your shoulders one last time. Feet on the floor. Inhale, lift up. And hold or keep your toes on for four. Three, two, and one. This time I want you to just put your feet on the floor. I want your hands on the top of your knees. We're going to do a very slow four. And we're just slide our hands down for one. We're going to get, land on our back. Two, you set four. Three, and land on your back. All right, as you're landing on your back now, put your feet on the floor and touch your heels. So I want you to push the small of the back into the floor and make sure everything is on. Got something a little bit slower here. All right, so feel that small of the back into the floor. This is beautiful alignment for the back. Feel the shoulders on the floor, the hands on the floor. Can you touch your heels? Find your breath, inhale. Now just lift your hips off the floor. Keep your fingertips to your heels. Keep your hips parallel. Your hip bones are going towards the ceiling. This is bridge pose. 
Now, can you scoot your left shoulder underneath a little more? Can you scoot your right shoulder a little more and keep lifting up and clasp your hands under your back? And breathe. Hold it there for four. For three. Keep lifting for two. Keep lifting for one. Release your shoulders and roll back down. One vertebra at a time, starting at the top until you get all the way back to that lower back and you'll do so. Good job, one more time. And lift up. We don't use our back enough, arching, stretching, here we are. We're also building strength in our leg as we're stretching our back. Shoulder to shoulder, bring the shoulders in, clasp the hand. Tuck your chin at your chest and breathe. Even if this feels super tight and you haven't stretched your back in a long time, just give it a try for just a few minutes. Any little bit is going to help open up that back. Push into your big toe and release everything. And as you release, roll it down one vertebra at a time as slow as you can. You've got your feet on the floor. And then just lift your, knee, your feet off the floor. Grab your knees, open your knees out, and pull your knees into your Here's that ultimate stretch in the spine. Feel it all the way down through the neck, through the spine, through the tailbone. Drop the left leg down and hold on to your right knee. So just point your left toe or flex it, whatever feels that you can engage. Take your right hand and stretch it out to the side. Hold on to your left knee with I mean right knee with your left hand. Take a deep inhale and bring that right knee over to the side. So again, you might not go to the floor, that's where blind fit can come in handy, or maybe you will, or just stop and let your hand guide you how deep you wanna go. But you wanna keep your right shoulder on the floor. Look over to the right, find your stretch, take a nice deep inhale. You wanna aim to keep that left leg straight, exhale, one more time, you can breathe through this nice and deep, inhale, exhale, and slowly bring it back. Straighten out your spine on the mat, pull your knee into your chest one more time. Flex your foot, take your right hand to your right big toe, take your left hand out to the side, and just kick your heel towards the ceiling. Again, you can keep your knee soft as you're stretching out that hamstring. If it's tight, it takes time. Nothing works overnight. I remember after I had my daughter, after I'd been dancing forever, and I didn't exercise. It took me four or five months to be able to bend my, my body over my legs because my hamstrings were so tight because I was just not doing anything. And I was busy being a, a new mom. It just takes time. It takes months sometimes to stretch your muscles back out. So you stick with something every week, once or twice a week, it works. All right, bring it back down change legs. So don't get discouraged. Everything starts first. It's, it, your body, as it ages too, is playing games with us all the time. I wake up and my body's saying, what? Where the next, the day before, it was perfectly fine. Bring your knees into your chest. Drop your left hand out to the side. Hold on to that left knee with your right hand. Take your left knee over. Look over your left shoulder. Feel that stretch in your waist and that twist. Breathe it out. Almost done here. And we're doing a lot of stuff on the floor now so that you can monitor your stretch, your individual uh, flexibility, and bring it back. So if this is difficult for you, you can just do it moderately and not straighten that leg. Grab that left big toe, hand out to the side, and just kick that heel up again. If you've got that bend in your leg, perfectly okay. The idea is to work the heel towards the ceiling. If you can keep straightening that leg, great. If you want a little more um, stretch and strength, I want you to flex that right foot and keep that engaged at the same time you're doing your left. Find your breath, inhale, and exhale. Again, we're starting off slow with this class. Once I know everybody's level and what they want to do and how they can do it, we'll change it and make it adaptive. Bring both of your knees in, open your knees out. I want you to touch your fingertips to the outsides of your feet. 
And then see if you can just lift those feet up a little into happy baby. You might have to open your knees out a little more. If you can't reach it, just reach onto the sides of the leg. Stomp your feet towards the ceiling. If you can grab your big toes or grab the outsides of your feet, this is happy baby. Think about how a baby gets on the back and throws their feet up in the air. You want to pull your feet towards the floor as your heels are pushing towards the ceiling, opening up that chest. And you really, really feel the small of the back on the floor here. This you can work as hard as you want, no matter what level. Holding on to it, and then just bring the soles of the feet together. And just open the knees out to the side and shake them out. Place your feet on the floor. Now we call these windshield wipers. I just want you to drop the right knee down, and then drop the left knee down. And feel that stretch in your hip flexor that we did. Keep going back and forth. And remember, even a class like this just gets you going. If you do a lot of exercise, this is a beautiful warm up for your body to be ready to go because you've stretched and strengthened, not to a, you know, a really intense degree, but you've definitely engaged and are aware so that when you go out and walk or do anything else, you're aware of your body being warmed up. All right, bring your soles and your feet together. Drop your, your knees open and just feel that stretch. And we're getting ready into what in yoga we call shavasana, which is when we relax and restore. So what we're going to do is place the palms up, arms on the floor, and then you're just going to open up one leg at a time to the floor, and you're going to close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, we're going to start bringing everything down. So whatever you've done as far as exercising with this class, holding, stretching, maybe you felt like it was a little too much, maybe it wasn't even enough, but you could have gone over and let everything go down. The belly that we were holding in, I want you to soften up. Let your feet kind of turn open. Relax your shoulders. And the goal in Shavasana is to keep your body still your breath moving. So if you feel like you're going to start to fidget, just start to go focus on that breath again. Relax your face muscles, your jaw, your eyelids, your ears. Continue to feel that breath moving. Start to wiggle your feet back. That was two and a half minutes. Move the fingers. Depending on how hard we work out every week, we can take a long or short shavasana. We'll try to keep this always to one hour. Take your arms over your head. As you start to wake that body back up, wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes. Stretch in opposite direction. 
and then release. Walk your feet in, bend your knees to your chest, give yourself a hug, watch that lower back, and roll over to the right. And as you do, just push yourself up to seated position, facing the front. We're going to finish in a meditation, just a few seconds of meditation, but coming back to the full essence of how we start, so sit up nice and tall on your sits bones. Take your palms and just rest them over your knees and bring your elbows into your sides, close your eyes. Still kind of in a mini shavasana, feeling rested and restored from stretching and strengthening. Honor your practice, honor and taking care of your body. Be aware of how important that is. And lift your arms up and over. We're going to take one more side stretch to finish up. Just stretch over to the side, bending your right elbow. Reaching as far as you want to go, and then come back up, arms go up to the ceiling, exhale, remember how your breath works with your practice. Always an inhale to prepare, and exhale into the pose. And come back up, and bring your hands to heart center, and that is our practice today. Namaste. I hope we can keep doing this every week. And I hope I'll turn the recording off so people who are watching can...